Hi, I'm Christopher Walker with Closely Observed English. Is English a difficult language? Yes, yes it is. Sometimes it's very difficult. And why? Because we have a complicated history. Words come from different places, sounds change, spelling rules change. And in this little lesson, I'm going to show you four words that I think are the perfect example of how difficult English can be. So the first word we're going to look at is tough. That's T-O-U-G-H. The U-G-H at the end has an uff sound in this case, but it's a little bit different with the other words we'll see. So what does tough mean? Well, tough is an adjective, and it describes something that is difficult or very firm. For example, maybe we talk about the English language as being a tough language to learn. This video presents one of the reasons why that is. We can also use tough to describe meat that isn't cooked very well. Wow, that steak was really tough, very chewy. We can also use it as a description for people. The people that I see at the football match seem like quite a tough crowd. That's one example. It's not always true, but sometimes it is. So that's tough, an adjective. Let's go on and have a look at the next one. Oh, and if you're wondering why this part of the video is so different from the rest, that's because it turns out when I was recording, yes, a couple of days ago, I accidentally pressed the record button whilst I was filming and it stopped recording and I didn't notice. So I was standing in front of that church for minutes and minutes and minutes going blah 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 and it wasn't recording any of it. Terrible. Anyway, on with the show. The next word we're going to look at is thorough. Thorough is also an adjective. It looks a little bit like tough and actually it is a little bit related. If you do something from start to finish very carefully, if you're tough with yourself as you do it, then you are being thorough. For example, my wife asks me to clean the apartment sometimes, so I do. But when I finish after 10 minutes, my wife says, Chris, have you been thorough? Have I cleaned from top to bottom? Have I vacuumed and mopped the floor? Have I cleared up or have I just moved rubbish from one place to another? And then I have to say, yeah, I wasn't thorough. So if you do something with an attention to detail, if you do it carefully, then you're doing it thoroughly, to use the adverb. Our next word uses the same letters. They all use much more or less the same letters. And this next word is through. Now through is not an adjective, it's a preposition. We can use it to talk about moving through space or time. Right now, I'm working my way through my day. I start in the morning and I finish in the evening. You can also move through space. For example, sometimes you travel through a tunnel. So that's the preposition through. The same letters as tough and thorough, but again we have another uh, pronunciation rule. We've got an oo sound at the end instead of a or uff. Let's have a look at one more word. And our last word in this set of four is not a preposition and it's not an adjective, it's a conjunction. The conjunctions are linking words. We use them to take one clause and stick it onto another one. And this conjunction is the word though. Sometimes you meet it as although, but quite commonly these days people say though. So what does it mean? Well, though in introduces a contradiction. Though it's cold today, it is still quite sunny and nice. So we introduced something negative and we switched it with though so that the overall meaning was positive. We can work it either way. But again, we've got the same sort of letters, the same th, got an o, 
U-G-H. We have the same as in all those other words, pretty much. And yet we had another pronunciation rule. And this really is why uh, English can be such a difficult language. There's so much going on with pronunciation. And like I said at the start, it really comes down to our history in a large way. Also, it took us a long time to get around to writing a dictionary. It wasn't until, for example, William Caxton, the likes of uh, the early printer publishers, when they came along, they started to standardize our spelling rules. They had to choose which one they felt was right. And quite often it reflected, um, let's say, the London dialect. And over time, it, it changed a lot. Um, there have been a lot of changes in our history. We had something called the Great Vowel Shift, which uh, was when a lot of the pronunciation rules changed quite dramatically. Uh, we've had change just because of fashion. And as these changes happen, pronunciation changes, the spelling might stay the same though. So it is worth bearing in mind that uh, English is the sort of language where you can't really look at a word and know how to pronounce it. What does that mean for you? Well, it means that you have to do even more work. What does it mean for me? It means I have a job to do. So thank you, English, for keeping me in employment. So, if you enjoyed that video, you know what to do. Please click on the like button. It's always nice to see those likes. It helps my videos get boosted in these weird YouTube rankings. I don't know how it works, but likes seem to be important. If you think more people should see these videos, then do like them. And think about subscribing to the channel. I think that's actually more for my ego than anything else. If you really enjoyed this video and the things that I'm doing here on the channel, please think about buying me a coffee. I'll see a link in the description below. And if you're a student learning on your own independently, that makes you an autodidact. So think about getting my book, 66 Little Lessons for Autodidacts. It's a book about vocabulary and building your word power, and it will take you through some of the history of the language as well. Learning the history of English is actually a really good way of learning about these weird spelling rules and pronunciation rules. So, that's it for today, and until next time, have a nice time. All the best. I'm outside the church making this video, and a priest has just walked past, and he looked at me, and he's like, so should yeah. <laughs> which I think roughly translates on <laughs> what silly thing are you doing? <laughs> I guess that the priests don't tend to make selfie videos of their various masses and uh, speeches from the pulpit. 